feel like I was duped. I literally can't believe I had such a wrong impression of the man. The small town of Cohasset, Massachusetts was flung into the national spotlight in early January when Brian Walsh was charged in the murder of his wife, Anna Walsh. Cohasset residents say the news is still difficult to believe. So I did, I had to do a little searching and when I saw his picture, I was stunned. Couldn't believe it. And like I said, he was always so nice when he came in here that I was like, no, it wasn't him. Sarah Geddes, whose family owns Cohasset Pizza House, says Brian Walsh was a regular customer who visited the store at least once a week. She says he always had a smile on his face and usually came into the store alone. His order would always be ready, so he was never waiting for long. He'd always come in and go out, but he was always pleasant. He was happy and that never changed. It was that same pleasant expression that Brian Walsh made outside the Quincy District Courthouse when he was first charged with misleading investigators in the search for his missing wife. Uh, I was like, no, you must have it wrong, but with all the evidence coming out, I mean, it's really hard to think it wasn't him. Last week, Brian Walsh was additionally charged for his wife's murder. Prosecutors revealed he made a series of incriminating internet searches after his wife went missing. At 5.20 a.m. he searched how we found a body. At 5.47 a.m. 10 ways to dispose, dispose of a dead body if you really need to. At 6.25 a.m. on the 1st, how long for someone to be missing to inherit. But before Anna Walsh went missing, Getty said the couple mostly kept to themselves. I haven't really met any customers that had any relationship with either of them, which I thought was strange because um, they lived in town for about two or three years, but they didn't really seem to make any friendships while they were here. Law and Crime Network spoke to Brian Walsh's landlord, who said the same thing. Walsh hardly ever spoke to him. While he did not want to give us his name or go on camera, Walsh's landlord said his rent payments always came in early and that he never thought twice about the family renting out the home. But it would be that same home where investigators would find blood and a bloody knife during their search for Anna. Oh, it was just like strange. It was just like movie like, I felt like. It just like didn't seem real. Mary Kate Armstrong is a barista at Poor Coffee and Bagel Shop, less than a mile from the Walsh's home. She was always quiet, I feel like. I, I, I remember seeing her mainly walk through here once, but this is like a long time ago, like months ago. And I just remember her being quiet. He just kind of looked like a creep. While the news of Brian Walsh's arrest came as a shock for the small town, in retrospect, some say the warning signs could have always been there. At first, you know, when I looked up at the picture, I said, there's no way this man is nice, he's happy, he's normal. But then a few days after they arrested him, um, and when he was coming out of the police station and he had that smile on his face, that was the exact smile he had when he was coming in here every day. So I'm sure it was just kind of his, his hidden self, his little demeanor that he just kind of showed the world and he just didn't know when to turn it off, I guess. Brian Walsh is due back in court on February 9th for a status hearing. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.